Garbage in, garbage out. If you truly understand the meaning of this one sentence, you already know more about machine learning, data mining and any technique to extract patterns from data than most people ever will. Data pre-processing is an essential step in every discipline that wants to make sense of data to ensure there is no garbage going in. Today we are going to look into all steps that can be part of such a pre-processing pipeline. Look, this topic could easily fill an entire semester at university and this video is not going to cover all of that. The mindset you should keep while watching this entire video is that if a section sounds unfamiliar to you, you need to drill down into the specific topic. Chances are you know most of them, but definitely watch the entire video since there are no unimportant steps. And a mistake at any stage could doom the entire project. With that being said, let's dive in. Data integration. Simply put, it's the process of finding all the data sources available to you for the problem and joining them together to form one unified view of the problem. Basically, the more quality data a machine learning algorithm or statistical method has, the better it will perform. The biggest challenge here is often different data schemes and possibly granularities. Just imagine monthly surveys in one company versus yearly surveys in another company. Data cleaning. Data cleaning is what most people think of when they say data pre-processing. It consists of several sub-clearing steps that all want to improve the data quality by cleaning, filling or removing problematic illogical parts in your dataset. Missing values. Filling missing values is the act of looking at missing values in your data. This can take the form of nonce, not applicables, nonce and another 30 annoying variants of the same concept I have seen in my professional life. The key aspect here is to think about how you want to fill those values. Let's assume you have a survey and 10% of the responders have not filled in their salary. You could fill them with the average, the median, zero or some form of clustering that you build based on the remaining answers. Of course, you can also throw them away. All are viable options and may change from case to case. Cleaning noisy data. Cleaning noisy data can take different forms and is the act of removing random errors or variances in your data. To illustrate this, let's imagine two targets. People were shooting on. And this is all you want to learn. Chances are the shots are randomly sprinkled around two centers. Your goal now is to convert the individual shots to their respective target. How are you going to do this? Again, you have a lot of options and each can be viable. Just to name some, options are binning, clustering, regression and a big family of different filtering methods such as cross-validated committees filters. Removing outliers. If you're trying to estimate the average wealth of an Earth citizen from a random sample of 100 people and you're unlucky enough to draw Elon Musk, you will have no chance to estimate the true average wealth without removing that one outlier. So be sure to always check for them before even starting. Removing duplicates. Duplicates will destroy any effort of learning sensible parameters from your distribution. They can take many forms and sometimes are not that easy to spot. However, in the most general case, make sure to use the good old select distinct from. Duplicates in one project may not be duplicates in another one. For example, when you analyze how often toothpaste and brushes are bought together versus how old your customers are, customer ID is maybe not the field you want to be selecting distinct from, so be careful. Redundant features. As with duplicated sample points, also useless features are bad for various aspects of your project. For example, H and is senior both describe pretty much the same thing. Again, be careful and make sure that you really need it. Data transformation. Since your data is now all clean and healthy, let's check if we can make it even better. That is the job of data transformation where you turn copper into gold. The general idea is that you take the features that you have and use your domain knowledge to make it easier for any algorithm that comes after it. You do this by explicitly encoding them into new features or changing existing features to be easier processable by such algorithms. Generalization. Generalizing is a lot more important if you have too little data. However, given that we are only like 8 billion people on the planet, for some use cases even all the data is not enough. 
Generalization is the act of aggregating from lower points of granularity to a higher one. In other words, instead of having the feature street plus street number, you maybe want to consider city or even country. Or if you have age in days to categories such as child, adult or senior. Normalization. Normalization or more commonly named feature scaling in machine learning is the act of turning features on an arbitrary feature scale to something between 0 and 1. Or at least some scale that allows all features to be roughly in the same magnitude of numbers. For example, instead of having salary in dollars next to a feature called years of job experience, you would have salary in 10k dollars and years of job experience next to each other. The entire process is crucial for most machine learning and data mining algorithms to function properly. If you want to know exactly why that is, I made an entire video about this topic that will teach you everything you need to know, so click on that card somewhere above my head. Feature engineering. Feature engineering is the act of encoding your domain knowledge into features. You will combine your features in such a way that the following model will have a much easier job to understand the distribution. An example can be turning images into grayscale, because you know the color won't matter in your use case. Let's imagine image classification planes versus cars. Or add a flag is retired for each person in your dataset when they are retired in the respective country, since this can be different if you are comparing multiple nations. Data reduction. Sometimes you have too many data points and are just drowning in them, which makes processing extremely slow. Let's for example assume you're trying to look at the price of bread and how it changes in different countries over the years. Do you really need to have for each bakery in the world for every day one data point of how expensive it is? In such cases it makes sense to, for example, aggregate all the points first per year and then possibly per country and maybe weight them by the number of inhabitants. This will save both a lot of time and money in terms of computing power, so be sure to choose the right level of granularity. Feature Feature selection. Feature selection is similar to data reduction, but instead of reducing the number of samples because you have too many, you reduce the number of features because you again have too many. There are many choices of how to do this, but the most common are tree-based methods or correlation-based methods, such as looking at the Pearson correlation and removing those that are not correlated with what you are trying to predict. This was a short run through everything there is to know about data pre-processing. Make sure to hit that like button such that a brand new audience can learn just as much as you did. Now that you know all the basics, I can only recommend that you keep digging and a great starting point is my video on feature scaling, which will teach you all you need to know about this topic in only 10 minutes. And if you can't wait to apply the gained knowledge from this video, check out my video on the best places to find datasets for machine learning, which can be obviously also be a great starting point for data mining projects.